Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And if you haven't already, go on Twitter, tweet at us at NASL TV. You can win a T-shirt for getting the right predictions for this complexity against Quantic Match. So please at NASL TV and just tweet us what your predictions are. And remember that the earlier your tweet, you, the better it is for you to win that NASL T-shirt. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the brackets really quickly before we step into the next game. We have Infinity 7 against Light, for those of you just tuning in. Uh, Roxkiss versus NRS. We got Quantic versus Complexity, which are, we are casting right now. Last but not least, we got Virtus Pro against It's Gosu as our last one. Uh, going back to camera one. Thanks, Elliot. Um, now, for those of you that don't know already, the top two will advance into the NASTL, which is a $10,000 team league. So uh, obviously a lot of top tier pros are going to be in here and they're going to be just duking it out. We're actually going to jump into the game right now. Elliot, let's go ahead and get in there, man. So it is going to be Complexity Cats against Quantic Apoc. Cats, I don't want you to lose, but I want you to lose. It's, it's a weird dynamic right now because... I want my glorious commentator, my co-caster. You know, I think me and Katz casted once together, and it was fan fantastico. I'm trying to think how to say it in Spanish. Era fantastico. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. He casted with me at the NASL, and we basically trolled the entire time. It was awesome. Season one. Booyah. His opponent's gonna be Quantic Apoc. I think this is Apocalypse. Or Apop Apocalypto. Or Apoxy. No, I'm just kidding. It's Apocalypse. And we do have a TVZ on NASL Metalopolis. Now, very quickly, we do have gold expansion in this version. Um, I'm informed to tell you that not only will we not have gold expansions in the NASL, and I believe in the NASTL as well, we won't have gold expansions. This will actually be cut probably to four mineral patches and only one gas. And I'm sorry, Terrans. I am a Terran player, but that is actually to nerf Terran and to nerf Protoss to a, a, an extent. Basically, what I was seeing is that, um, you know, against the Zerg matchups, either race gets those, Terran or Protoss, and Zerg just QQs. So I'm going to go ahead and change that also. TVP, we had this dynamic where, uh, you know, a lot of people said Terran were favorite. It wasn't actually Terran were favorites or Protoss were favorites. It's that once you had momentum and you had center control, it was impossible to lose. With these gold expansions, it was literally impossible to lose. So... You, you know, you put Planetary Fortress down here, or you've seen it so many times, cannons on the top here, and it would basically disable you from ever using your opponent, or your opponent using from the gold expansion. So, got rid of that. No more of that. Now you're punished for taking the center with reduced amount of minerals and gas. Good job, Andre. Thanks. You're a good map maker. Well, I'm okay. All right. Anyway, we do have a Reaper opening. A very interesting type of Reaper opening. I'm assuming some sort of Reaper expand into a very fast stim. That's what we see a lot of times in TVZ. Well, I shouldn't say a lot of times. Maybe, you know, 15, 20% of the games. Uh, but <laughs> this is super standard. Complexity Cats going for fast expansion, 15. And then getting Extractor thereafter. He does this delayed Extractor so that it can plop down... Uh, queens at the same time if you didn't supply cap <laughs> oh cats you cray and uh, he's actually continuing with reaper production very interesting so we'll see if this actually gets the job done now I like this because cats is known for actually going delayed delayed uh, metabolic boost so this is actually punishing cats style <coughs> course when queens come out he will be a lot better but still a lot of work can be done with just you know a couple reapers they do two shot zerglings if they're attacked in in fast succession so we'll see if he's able to do anything Ooh, this reaper could be in a lot of trouble if he actually pops up there don't pop up don't pop up don't pop up just a little hit and run nothing too big 
So fast combat shields, of course, Stim will follow thereafter. This bunker is a little bit weirdly placed. A lot of times you have it on the ramp. But it looks like, ooh, these Reapers were able to get in and kill the Zerkling. So this is what I'm talking about. Not having Metabolic Boost, but oh no, the drones are actually trapping all these Reapers. The Reapers need to get out of there. One does go down before, before the overall onslaught of these Reapers are actually um, continued. But, uh, you know, with one Reaper, you can't really do much in this, this point in time. Uh, I think the Reapers overall weren't as worth it. You can't really go too all-in with that. What you want to do is actually bait as many Zerglings and just abuse the fact that you can snipe the Queens. And what's going to happen is your opponent has to react. They can't just lose a Queen because there, it's a 100% guarantee that the Reapers can just kite that Queen back and forth, back and forth. So you bait as many Zerglings as possible. That's actually indirect damage. You're not allowing your your opponent to go drones and thereby weakening the economy, allowing you to catch up. So right now, income tab, you can see that because of that Reaper opening, there's a very definite advantage in terms of uh, harvester count. Ten harvesters more for cats. That represents a, a just about 33%, almost, well, a lot more than that. Maybe 40% advantage over his opponent. Very staggering amount. I'm saying that blue relative to to yellow, right? Well, now it's 11, but still 33%, just about. So I like where Apoc is going from here. He is just going for a heavy, heavy bio. Again, I would have loved a wall up here, but this is still a good variation. I mean, with good micro, if you have like that Kawhi Rice, Happy, that type of micro, Marine King Prime micro, which I'm sure Apoc has, he'll be able to uh, micro out of anything. And I know this player is quite a fantastic player, so he definitely has the capabilities of doing that. Katz is going to push out for now, try to take a little bit of map control. Here's another problem with going to late metabolic boost. Um, you do have the problem of not having map control for so long, so there's a lot of all-ins that could actually do very well against Katz. But we can see a very fast Spire behind this. He will have pre-10-minute... I do believe... Uh, no. He'll just have about like pre-11-minute... So, standard timing, lol, standard. And what is it, Baneling's Nest? Okay, that's very standard as well. Normally you get the Baneling Nest just to defend against any all-ins. This is a lot of times, that pre-10 minute timing is a lot of times where Terrans push out with like three siege tanks and a lot of Marines, and they just go for the, uh, the big push, denying a lot, a lot of creep spread. Also taking out fast, fast thirds. But of course, that's not going to be happening. But a very important, um, no, important building to actually get. Else, you'll be in a lot of trouble. So the Marines are going to need micro and back. Stim has been initiated, and he's just going to pipe these Marines back and forth. A good job by Apoc. So far, nothing too crazy. Ooh, double drop coming out. Ca cats, double drop coming your way. And. <clears throat> this is a little st I mean this is well let's be honest this is really really bad for Pac at this point because he's going to be running into a lot of mutas and zerglings and basically what this is going to mean is that these will drop and so long as Katz has the, the material out there is zero chance that this this uh without well he has to win decisively or he's completely dead right now because he's going to lose a lot if Baylin's can connect here and there's no way that he can retreat. Baylin's going to push forward. Oh my god! Beautiful Baneling hits. He actually loads up and the Mutas will take out the rest of the units. Medivac goes down with a ton of Marines in there and from here on out I think Katz has a very very direct way of winning the game. He should just mass up in Zerglings right now, wait for centrifugal hooks, and just go for a huge, huge all-in, knowing that his opponent has a very, very crazy deficit in the mounting units he has. Cat's going to go and poke up right now. A great decision to take out these reactors. He's actually going to go, looks like, uh, he could have picked off that reactor. I would have loved him just to do that. But Katz should be, yes, look at that. He's just going to mass up in Zerglings, waiting for that centrifugal hoax, getting additional Banelings. I love it. I love it. I love it. Katz going to realize that right now is the perfect time to actually go in for the huge all. It's not really an all-in. 
It's going to be a, a very... It's going to do damage 100% of the time. Especially with this uh, command center out here. Great job by Cats. A great defense. Unfortunately, to an extent though, I don't want to take away like Apocalypse could do anything about it. It was a little bit of a build order counter. So I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, Apocalypse, he should have done that well, he should have, no. Uh, it, it's just a shame, Apocalypse did run into one of the builds that basically um, smashes this build. So Apocalypse, not a lot he can do from here. He has to play defensive for quite a long time. That leads for a lot of variations. Cat's actually not going to go for the all-in. He's going to just sit back and relax for Animaniacs. So, kind of a weird timing for Apocalypse to actually push out. Um, I'm actually kind of worried about this. I don't think this is actually correct, just because of all the variations that Cats could be doing, unless he did get a good scan. No, he didn't even scan this, so this is a very risky push. Um, for right now, Apocalypse understands. Ooh, a little bit of drop. I actually missed this drop back here. Excuse me. The drop is cleaned up. Um, right now, Apocalypse has a huge set of different builds he could be going up against. It could be something like Greedy like this, which is Cats doing, going up to four bases at this point. But it could be just still two base, and in that case, there's going to be a ton of Zerg and Baneling. Uh, Cats is doing a three base, which is still going to be strong. And in this position, I do feel like Cats, um you know, still with, with his advantage, will be able to take all down all this. Ooh, nom nom nom. Free tanks in the center of the map. And look at this. A counterattack swinging around. These Zerglings are going to catch all these Marines and tanks off guard. And again, taking down that ca tank count is so important. Running into a planetary fortress, that is not what he wants to see. I think he should have went for that siege tank. But still, I guess he wanted to scout out, see if there was an expansion over there. And to his dismay, he does see an expansion. Kind of unfortunate for Cats. He realized he's not nearly as ahead as he wanted to be. Uh, he did go Banelings quite early. It does mess with the Muta count, but look at that. He's getting six additional Mutas. And what I mean by that, he went Banelings super, super early without knowing. That's why I thought for sure he was going to do an all-in, because he's prepping that huge Zergling Baneling force. But going Banelings, you're actually losing uh, a lot of opportunity in getting Mutas, so dealing more di direct damage to, let's say, your opponent by uh, killing turrets and also forcing more turrets, things like that. So, Cat's still in a slight advantage, I would say, but Apoc is holding on here. And, you know, he has messed up. His tank count is severely uh, hampered. But I think he's still in a manageable situation. Looks like a, a small little drop here on the right-hand side. That's going to be cleaned up very easy. Muta goes down. A little bit careless by Cats. This Queen also goes down. No units actually being traveled over there. Uh, it was actually the Mutas coming from all the way across the map. Third is being focused down. I don't think it'll go down in time. No, it will not. The Marines will be cleaned up. Let's put in the Units tab. 20 Mutas out in the field. Upgrades are looking 1-1. 1-1. One, one. And Pac going to push out now. And look at this. He has a pretty big army. Pushing out the 168 food. I like this push out. I think it's pretty decent. Ooh. Apocalypse does need to be very careful. He doesn't want to be pushing too hard on creep. And while the units are out and about, of course, Cat's going to take that that uh, that mobility advantage that he has and gonna just swing around attack his third oh my god a lot of units out here if he actually swung in and, and with his zerglings he would have been in a great position he has zerglings over here at the top right hand corner that he's actually not using but look at this cats is just monstrous at this point rallying more zerglings we might be seeing a huge push right now cats actually streaming forward i think he didn't mean to actually engage right here because the, the Muters are so far behind and the Banelings are going to explode before actually reaching any of the Marines. A great engagement for Pac. He needs to carry this momentum on right now. Force as many, Zerg or as many Banelings as possible. There they all go. If he forces more Banelings, what that does is just delays that tech, that Hive tech. It really delays the power of, let's say, Infestors. The more Banelings that you actually pop out and you force, the less Infestors they have to work with. And Infestors are definitely units that give you a lot of momentum, especially as you raise the numbers more and more and more. 
More fungal growth means uh, more happy time. So this push is going to push forward. LOL. Said that wrong. And he's looking pretty decent. Look at this spread. An amazing spread, but he does have creep spread all over the place. I would love him to actually deal with this. Marine's going to go into the bottom left-hand corner base. That should be the cue for Cats to actually do something about this. Nice fungal growth on these units. Tank going up way too far. And, uh-oh, there might be way too many Zerglings in this army. This isn't good. Marines are spread out very nicely. Muters are actually coming in from the side. Magic boxing the one Thor. Now focused down on all the tanks. The tanks are so spread out. Not a lot of Marines out here. But they're actually not focusing down on the Marines. The Marines are so badly injured, you could have easily cleaned those up. In the meantime, the bottom left-hand corner, the Marines have taken out the fourth base. So Apocalypse in a great position. 161 food to 110. He's at 2-2 upgrades. What is Cats at? Should be at 2-2 as well. There he goes. And now, oh. Oh, oh. He's a pretty good move. But the problem is... Cats doesn't have power hitting units anymore. Mutas are the power hitting units. Broodlords are power hitting units. He's trying to get Broodlords at this time. This is a very, very tough time for Cats. He's just like hoping his opponent doesn't push out right now. He does have the capabilities of doing that because Apocalypse lost a ton. I mean a ton of infest or of uh of siege tanks. So infestors are extra powerful at this point just because he can kite with infestors all day long. This is a lot of Thors, though. And I like this play. It does deal with uh, with Broodlords pretty well, but with infestors, maybe not as much. Oh. Yo, don't push in here, Cats. That would be incorrecto. The Spaniel for incorrect. You didn't know. And this game has been... Very crazy. Very, very crazy. Gold expansion will be cancelled. You did expect that Broodlord cannot poke out like this. There's only four of them, cats. You be careful. You. I mean, this is enough Thors at this point, I think. But, you know, it, it's weird. I, th I almost feel like a Pac feels like this is going to be a... a Muta ball rather than a Broodlord ball. That's how he's spacing everything out. And now the Three Lords. Ooh, big stim up. We will get some fungal growth, but look at this. It's just not a lot. Nice fungal growth on the right-hand side. Will he continue it? It looks like these Three Lords are just completely surrounded. Just too many units. Baneling's going to be streaming in. Are they going to connect? Yes, they will. But so many Thors at this point. And now the Marines again stream in from the right-hand side. Infested Terrans will be pooped out. Will it be enough, though? Infested Terrans do, uh, do a surprising amount of damage. The Marines can clean that up very easily. Cancelled again this gold expansion. And these Thors are heroes. Not liquid heroes, just heroes. Additional Broodlord is going to try to be popped out right here, but it's going to be shot down before we even morph. Additional Banelings going to be popping out, but Apocalypse looking in a great, great form. I think he'll be able to take this out, although there's a lot of small little units. Thors aren't good at going against Zerglings, actually, Infested Terrans. He needs a lot more Marines, and there goes one Thor. Is it going to be enough? More Broodlords actually on top here. There is Thor inside this one medevac. Is it going to be enough? Good job by uh, by Katz, and he will be able to hold this off. But in the meantime, there is an Orbital Command Center that has been popped down here. This is by that the natural, or excuse me, the main. Vikings are just trying to pick off as much as possible. He's going to have to back up. Still, Apocalypse in a great position because he can keep massing these Marines. Marines are exactly what you need at this point. Because what can Cats do? Look at this. His income isn't too great. He has the equal harvesters at this point, but without that gold expansion, that's going to be a very difficult situation. Thankfully, it's not a Planetarium Fortress. Another Orbital Command Center is actually going to be put down right next to his gold expansion. It's going to give him the ability to obviously put more mules down here. I would love him to actually saturate ba that base a little bit more. All these... Ah! SEVs! Do something! Stop doing nothing! 
going to the uh, Quantic Hawk Camp. See 20 SEVs. And, um, you know, things are, are. This is normal Metal. Uh, Metalopolis. Um, this is normal Antigua Shipyard type of play, especially at this in game stage. Zerg has uh, a slight advantage just based on, you know, how this particular map plays out with the power of the world expansion. Looks like he's moving on to this lower left-hand side. A lot of bailing shaping up. Wow, there's a huge stream of units in the middle of the map here. And this could spell very, very profitable games for cats. Because the banelings are going to be coming in from the opposite side. Where are those banelings, actually? A lot of fungal growths going off. But look at how many medevacs there are. Good job. So far, by Apocalypse, additional fungal growth going off. That one Thor is able to go down. Uh, Broodlords are actually staying very, very safe. And what's so impressive is that Katz has kept his uh, Infestor count rather strong. He's been doing a very good job at keeping that going. And for the most part, I think because of that, he's actually risen to another advantage. I think he's denying this gold expansion is instrumental in winning this game. Additional Zergans will be piling on. There are uh, a small group of Marines over here, but one Bailing should be enough to actually kill all four of those. There you go. Gold expansion will be denied, but he did mine that quite a bit. Will it be enough, though? Apocalypse is still mining off of one base. Fluxy Cat's mining off of one base as well. Uh, it all comes down to this fight, I think. And there you go. Infested Terran's going to be pooping out, forcing the retreat on its opponent. That one Orbital Command Center did get taken out. That's very important to note because that represents a lot of the economy, uh, the potential economy of Quantic Apocalypse. And there you go, finally using those SCVs. I think the game, that was probably one of the big things too, Apocalypse, if he actually used those SCVs on that gold expansion, he would have had a lot more minerals, a lot more units, and therefore I think would have been able to hold that off. But overall, this has been an epic, epic game. Apocalypse showing some great skill, and ho ho, worst time to be simming there. That was a double sim on all those marines, so it one-shots every single marine with those banelings. And overall, because the Infestor count hasn't actually been thwarted, Katz is going to take a very decisive advantage in this game. And Apocalypse knows this. I mean, he has no... He has no siege tanks or ghosts to actually deal with it, with the uh, infestor count. So at this point, he's just going the perfect army. He's going the perfect army composition, army opposition, army composition for complexity of cats. So it's shaping up to be really good for for cats at this point. I would have said that Apocalypse had a, a great bout of momentum before, but right now, cats basically dictates where the game goes. His... Okay, here's the thing. The third is mining up for cats. Whereas Apocalypse still has a little bit more. And he's getting his fourth this time. If he can just turtle up and take this base and start going the composition that actually defeats Broodlord and Festers, that'll be... I think he'll be in a, a, a great position. See, this composition is good when you're on a high economy base, right? You can throw Marines at your opponent, Thors. It's just like a brute force method. But not when it's low economy at this point. You can't sustain this type of army. It just will not work. Oh my god! Oh! oh. The, the, the infestors are just thrown at his opponent. And just like that, I move, you move. And uh, apparently Apocalypse just hit cats. That's how we do it. I have these subtle, subtle uh, song jokes everywhere but it goes over the head of people that are born in the 1990s, maybe. Uh, actually, I always think that's a lot younger now. That's not pretty old. Whatever. Uh, so Apocalypse will be able to take this top middle expansion. That's going to be instrumental for him in getting back into the game. Now what he needs to do is build on his army composition. He cannot stay with this current dynamic of Marine Thor. I mean, as I said, it's great... When you're in high economy situations, you can brute forth a lot of different trades and forces a ton of decision making for your opponent, but this is this is the problem. 
Veiling streaming in. They will connect because the Fungi Earth is keeping in place. And now it's just the Thors and a handful of Vikings. GGEO comes out from Apocalypse. Cats is going to take game number two, putting him up 2 0. And that's going to do it. So Cats performing really well. There were a couple of times, I think. Apocalypse going for that spread out siege tank type of thing was incorrect and I'll explain to you why when you're doing that type of, uh, of build you have to you only or excuse me when you're doing that type of spread you only do it either in two positions when you're 200 200 or you've just traded armies and you're pushing in again and the reason for that is because the mute account you can only do it 200-200, assuming that you have Thors there. It deals with the Mutas very easily. It forces them not to be in a great position because they like to attack a single entity and just be all over it so the Zergans can tank the damage and then the Mutas won't have to deal with anything. When you spread out completely, then the Mutas are forced to take damage and, uh, and they end up dying. Well, what he did was he did it just straight out at, as I said, 160 uh, supply push. And the reason why that's not good is because the Mutas can actually take advantage when the Thor count doesn't exist. And he only had one Thor. Now, he spread out so much where the Zerklings could actually pick him off. He, I think he overextended his, his spread. And he really just wasn't cost efficient at this point. He just he wasn't able to connect his siege tanks as much. The firepower wasn't as good. His Marines weren't all together. So overall, I think if he just congregate all of his units, he would in a much better position. Take out the fourth and then drop back to the gold expansion much better position but Katz was able to actually come back into that and sort of relive because I feel like him losing all the mutas in that first engagement really hurt him so much uh, but he was able to climb his way back and then there was that transition period where um, uh, Apocalypse went those Thors didn't get any siege tanks and empowered the 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 uh, infestors and when you empower the infestors it basically says please go broodlords because i can't do anything about it it forces really hard tech switches which actually apocalypse didn't do he should have went to ghost viking and uh and siege tanks because you need to clear out the the uh, what's it called the infestors i keep blanking on that name uh, unfortunately that didn't happen he went for the brute force and you can't do that when you're in such a low economy situation but cats is going to take game number two uh, so congratulations to him. Complexity is up 2-0, and they're looking really, really good. Again, tweet us at NASL TV. That's where you can give us your match predictions. From there, you might win a free shirt. Remember, the earlier people that predict uh, predict the matches will be in a better chance to win that NASL shirt. So uh, definitely do that. And when we come back, we'll be doing a chat giveaway. Don't go away. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs> 